Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's, a, it's an honor, it's a privilege to be able to preach the Word of God this morning. If you're visiting with us, my name is Corey McClary, and uh, we are incredibly grateful that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. Amen? Amen. I was told that uh, I have an hour to preach. So I'm going to lay it out this morning. Um, just joking. But it, 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 it is great to hear the fellowship of the children in the church this morning. It's good to have our family together. Um, I'm going to jump right into it uh, because we're trying to keep it to an hour. So I'm going to jump right into it. Turn in your Bibles to Isaiah 40. Verse 30 and 31. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was given the opportunity to preach the keynote message uh, in Atlanta for uh, their teen rally, uh, their first ever for the Southeast uh, there in Atlanta. Um, around 275 teenagers um, and we had an incredible time, and the theme of the uh, conference was Rise. And this morning, I want to preach that message, uh, but I'm going to um, gear it a little bit more towards the audience we have here today. Amen? Somebody said, thank you. <laughs> I don't water it down for teens. Uh, but the culture was a little bit more intimate. And so I was able to go around with a microphone and have them participate in the sermon. And uh, I'm not gonna do that this morning. So I'm not sharing that because I watered it down because I didn't. Um, I'm sharing that because I can't interact with you guys uh, in that way this morning, amen? The title is, of the sermon is Entrusted to Rise. Entrusted to rise. It's funny because this morning we sung the song, Steadfast Love of the Lord, This World is Not My Home. How majestic is your name, Lamb of God. To God be the glory. And the church said, Amen. Amen. And then Darius got up here and he talked about the struggles that he was going through with his business. And I know this morning that we all have struggles and trials and issues. And in Isaiah 40, the Israelites, the remnant of Israel is returning to Jerusalem. But the land lay in ruins, and they have a long journey back. And this is their voice, this is how they're feeling and thinking about God as they're journeying back to Jerusalem, the center of worship, after being in exile for over 70 years. The remnant is returning home. And in verse 30, the Bible reads, even youth, even youths, come on teens, come on middle school, come on kids kingdom, even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, Amen. come on, yeah. but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. That's powerful. Thank you. 
Amen. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This morning as we go out and we live in this busy and dark world, I want to teach you this morning how to rise above your circumstances. I got three words for you this morning. Wait, renew, and walk. The first word is wait. We're not talking about being idle. We're not talking about inactivity. We're not talking about sitting around and, and looking up in the sky and waiting for God to do something incredible while you sit there. But the Hebrew meaning there is this word kava. Kava means to bind together. To draw closer to God. To wait means to hope. To look for God in every situation. But as I'm waiting, I'm drawing closer to God. Let me give you an example. Maybe they'll become real to you. In January 6, on January 6 of 2017, Step and I were getting ready for a leadership meeting in Cincinnati, Ohio. We're in our bathroom and we're getting ready. And we have a couch in front of our bed. And we're in the bathroom and we, we hear these noises. And we're, we hear this crying out and this moaning and groaning and we look out of our bathroom and there's my son, Chase. <laughs> and he's having a grandma seizure. His face is blue. His lips are colorless. We're sitting there and we're talking to him and with Steph and I, our, our, our competitiveness and our teamwork took control. As she was talking to Chase, I was calling 911. The ambulance came and it seemed like eternity. Chase is in the ambulance, and he wakes up, and he realizes where he is now. And he says, what, what, what's going on? What proceeds to happen as we move forward, as we, we go to the neurologist, we have an appointment, and they do all these tests, and it's found that Chase has a spot on his brain. Maybe it's scar tissue, maybe it's a tumor. But we won't know because we have to wait three months. We have to wait to see if that spot would grow. If that spot grows, that means that pretty much it's a tumor. And it's in a place where it's inoperable. Or it's the scar tissue. And so Steph and I had conversations that we've never ever thought we would have. But in the process, we're on our knees. <laughs> 
We're drawing closer to God, closer and closer to God. We're drawing closer to one another. We text and email all of our friends. And to get the kingdom to start praying. As you can imagine, the wait was stressful. And there was tears every night. What if I have to say goodbye to my son? Waiting on the Lord. As I wait, I have to accept the will of God. As you wait in your circumstances, are you surrendered to the will of God? Are you surrendered to his timing? Are you surrendered to the answer he will give you? Are you surrendered to his will? Because the answer doesn't turn out the way you want it all the time. Sometimes your prayers are not answered, even if you're praying in faith. Because God knows what he's doing. Do you wait? Or do you begin to scheme? Thinking, what can I do to deliver myself from this horrific situation? Number two, renew. Renew. Matthew 6, 11, when the Jesus was teaching the disciples to pray. He says, I want you to remember this. He says, I'm giving you an outline of things to pray for. I don't want you to recite this every time you pray, but I'm giving you an outline of things to pray for. He says in verse 11 of Matthew 6, he says, give us today our daily, say it with me, bread. bread. Wow. Give us, when? Daily. Daily. So, let me ask you something. Do you recommit yourself daily to the provision of God? Let's look in Exodus 16 real quick. Are you with me? Verse 1. It says, the whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron, the Israelites said to them, only, excuse me, we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve the entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. And this way I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in. And that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. 
Skip down to verse 13. That evening, quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. But it said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. And the church said, Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Come on, you don't hear me. <laughs> Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Well, God gives us what we need, not what we want. But I love what he said. He says, daily, I want you to go out and get as much as you need. Daily. I'm going to take, I'm going to take care of you. I got a question for you. When needs arise, do you trust that God's going to take care of you? Daily, do you ask for your daily bread? Do you trust in the provision of God? because he'll give us everything we need. And do you realize that this wasn't just a week? This wasn't just, it just didn't happen in a week. This was 40 what? Years. 40 what? Years. 40 years! Day after day after day after day, God says, I got you! Wouldn't that be cool to just walk outside? <laughs> That's awesome. You talking about curb pickup? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. God had that taken care of way back in the day. Walmart ain't got nothing on God. <laughs> Verse 20. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. Uh-oh. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Each one and everyone gathered as much as they needed. And when the sun grew hot, it melted. It melted away, excuse me. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much, two omens for each person. And the leaders of the community came and reported this to Moses. He said to them, this is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left and keep it until morning. So they saved it until morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink or get maggots in it. Eat it today, Moses said, because today is a Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day of the Sabbath, the Sabbath there will not be any. Nevertheless, <laughs> well, <laughs> nevertheless, wow, is this us? Come on. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day. <laughs> wow. Wait for the Lord. Wait 
for the Lord. So, nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. Then the Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? You find yourself dealing with the same situation over and over and over again. Do you find yourself in that situation where you, you're dealing, you feel like I'm dealing with the same thing over and over and over again? Maybe you're not listening to the Lord's instructions. The only way to rise when you get knocked down is to trust the provision of God daily. Amen? Last but not least, walk. Walk. I'm going to go back to Isaiah 40 real quick and read that for you again. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. You know, the only time you can soar, run, and walk is when you wait on the Lord and you trust in his provision. Bless you. You know what I think about when I think about soaring? They will soar. They will soar on wings like what? Eagles. You think about the birds of the air, the eagle, close to God. You know, they're soaring up there close to God. You know, I think about times when, when we were baptized. We were soaring. Man, we were soaring. When we go to international conferences, oh man, we soar. The fellowship is rich. We eat a lot. It's awesome. I think about when God is blessing us time and time again, and, and, and we're running the race. I mean, we feel good about what God has us. I think the hardest thing for us to do as Christians is to walk. I think when we're with the body, it's incredible. We don't even want to go home. I think about the teens and the retreats when we went to the team rally and how the teens were crying and taking pictures together. And they were just together for a weekend. They didn't want to go home. They loved being together. They were soaring. They were running. And you know how like when you come back from a conference? Come on, Corey. Well come back from a conference, man, you, you're fired up. I'm going to make all these changes. I heard some great messages. Man, I was convicted. The Spirit spoke to me in incredible ways. And then I get back. I got to do homework. That's right. And I got to go to school. And I got to deal with the world. And I got to deal with vaping and jeweling and sexting and gossip and slander. 
sex on campus. I got to go back to work and deal with that difficult coworker. I got to go back to work and work for a boss who doesn't appreciate me. I got to go back to college. I got about three or four papers to write. And they're, they're guys that are coming at me. They're coming at me. And they're girls that are coming at me. And, 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 and it's just real. It's real. And God says, you got to walk. You got to walk. The testament or the barometer of our Christianity really depends on where we're at when we're by ourselves. Daily as we're walking with God. Not when you're at church, not when you're at a retreat, not when you're at a teen rally, not even when you're in your house church, but when you're by yourself walking with God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the journey of a thousand miles, excuse me, the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. We got to walk. Put one foot in front of the other and walk. Daily walk with God. Trust in His provisions. Trust in His provisions. And wait and draw closer to God when things are going on in our lives. And guess what? we will rise. To God be the glory.